Hi everyone. My name is Yang. Welcome to this class. Last class we talked about non-motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Today we are going to explore pharmacological and surgical treatments for Parkinson's disease. We hope you enjoy it. And please, pause the video as many times you need. We will start with the main medications used to treat Parkinson's disease motor symptoms. The mainstay for PD treatment involves drugs that replace dopamine or simulate its effect on the dopamine receptor. Let's talk about each one, their mechanism of action and possible side effects. But first, we will bring three concepts related to the use of some of these drugs. Wearing off, on and off phenomenon, and dyskinesias. Wearing off is the most common kind of motor complication associated with levodopa. Wearing off is defined as an aggravation of symptoms that occurs during the period immediately before the next medication dose. It includes recurrence of motor and non-motor symptoms such as tremor, bradykinesia, rigidity, anxiety, depression, or fatigue, and have implications in health-related quality of life. If these symptoms cause functional impairment even with the optimal medication dosing, interventional therapies may be indicated for the patient. The idea is to keep more continuous levels of dopaminergic stimulation. In advances cases therapies with deep brain stimulation or carbidopa and levodopa enteral by gastrostomy suspension. On and off phenomenon, they are also known as random fluctuations or effect. In this complication, the patient abruptly goes through periods of complete immobility, off period, to a state of mobility, very often accompanied by dyskinesias, on period. There is apparently no relationship with individual levodopa shots, and off periods tend to predominate along the day. Dyskinesias Dyskinesias secondary to the treatment of Parkinson's disease can manifest with any type of abnormal movements, such as, chorea, apoptosis, dystonia, orofacial dyskinesia, myoclonus, and tics. In the patient with this type of movement disorders, diagnosis and treatment of complication. We often observe that not all levodopa are accompanied by involuntary movements. It is characterized by chorea aathetotic movements affecting the extremities, with greater intensity, and the axial region and the face, a little less intensely. It often differs from other choreic pictures by presenting a certain stereotypy, with the movements assuming a certain pattern, such as pronation supination of the hands and successive movements or movement of lateralization of the feet from one side to the other. Dystonic and voluntary movement type may superadd to chorea type, but tend to predominate in the axial region, particularly in the neck. As the name says, dyskinesia occurs in the middle of the drug's useful period of action and may last for a few minutes to an hour or two. In this video we will discuss these and other treatment options for Parkinson's disease. Let's begin. Levodopa As already mentioned in previous videos, in Parkinson's disease there is a decrease in striatal dopaminergic neurotransmission. Thus, it is obvious think that a pharmacological treatment strategy would be the B2 replacement of this neurotransmitter. The dopamine molecule does not cross the blood-brain barrier. Therefore an alternative approach is to use Levo 34 dihydroxyphenylalanine also known as levodopa or L-dopa as dopamine's immediate precursor. Levodopa is an amino acid that is converted into dopamine after crossing the blood-brain barrier and is the best drug for controlling the motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. To be effective, levodopa therapy must be combined with dopa-decarboxylase inhibitor. Dopa-decarboxylase inhibitors, also known carbidopa or benzoseed, prevent peripheral dopamine conversion since dopamine does not cross the blood-brain barrier. With this association, L-DOPA's systemic conversion to dopamine is blocked, thereby enhancing its central nervous system bioavailability, tolerability, and clinical effectiveness. Proteins may interfere with the transport of levodopa to the brain. For this reason, the level of protein intake competes with the transport of levodopa to the brain can, reducing the levodopa effectiveness. Therefore, to increase the drug bioavailability, Patients must are advised to not take levodopa with meals, for example, to increase its bioavailability. Some side effects of levodopa may occur, 
If symptoms of nausea induced by levodopa are observed it is recommended to use domperidone or ondansetroni as antiemetic. The use of common antiemetics must be avoided due to their antidopaminergic effects, so, they can because they can worsen the symptoms of PD by their antidopaminergic effects. As the disease progresses, the levodopa dosage may be increased to control the motor symptoms with disease progression. Motor complications as wearing off and dyskinesias induced by levodopa may commonly be observed after some years of treatment. In the advanced stages of the disease or with higher doses of levodopa, non-motor side effects such as hallucinations, delusions, and orthostatic hypotension are relatively common side effects. The pharmacological treatment with levodopa may be started as early as possible. However, but the medication must be limited to the lowest effective dose always whenever possible. In addition, we need to understand that the pathophysiology of Parkinson's disease involves other neurotransmitter systems than the dopaminergic one. The depletion of other neurotransmitter systems such as monoamines contributes to the changes in brain functioning and to motor and non-motor manifestations of the disease. Dopamine Agonists Dopamine agonists reproduce the effects of dopamine in their receptors. The early administration of dopamine agonists may delay the need for levodopa and, therefore, delay the onset of levodopa-induced dyskinesia. However, unfortunately, these drugs do not offer the same degree of symptom relief as levodopa does. Dopamine agonists have a role as add-on therapy to levodopa to reduce the length and severity of off time. They also serve as a levodopa-sparing agent, reducing the need for higher or more frequent levodopa doses, and, therefore, they may help to reduce levodopa-induced side effects. Dopamine agonists can be recommended as initial therapy to patients with fear of dyskinesia, in those desiring less frequent medication dosing. However, this class of drugs has more side effects compared to levodopa. Side effects that are not well tolerated by patients are peripheral edema, impulse control disorders, skin irritation, psychosis, sleepiness and withdrawal syndrome. The administration of dopamine agonists in association with levodopa can reduce dyskinesia by reducing the levodopa dosage. An important advantage of dopamine agonists is their longer half-life than levodopa which makes them attractive candidates as adjunct therapies in patients with motor fluctuations. Cathecol O-methyltransferase inhibitors The mechanism of action of catechol O-methyltransferase inhibitors occurs by inhibiting the metabolism of levodopa and dopamine, causing a more prolonged action of these neurotransmitters. This extension of the duration of the effect of individual levodopa doses via cathical O-methyltransferase inhibitors can help patients with motor fluctuations. However, in this way, there may also be an increase in the side effects of levodopa. Among the possible side effects of using this class of drugs are mild diarrhea, which can be delayed by weeks to several months after initiation, and benign discoloration of urine. Monoamine oxidase B inhibitors Inhibition of monoamine oxidase B prolongs and increases synaptic dopamine concentrations, decreasing its degradation. It is a major clearance mechanism for synaptically released dopamine, next to presynaptic reuptake via the dopamine transporter. Selegiline and risagiline are irreversible MAO-B inhibitors, while safinamide acts as a reversible MAO-B inhibitor. When they are used daily, they can improve the motor impairment of patients with Parkinson's disease. Amantadine Levodopa is the most common drug prescribed to relieve the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. However, levodopa is associated with motor complications, in particular motor dyskinesias. Amantadine was first used as an antiviral drug, but it has been shown to improve some Parkinson's disease symptoms. Amantadine has a mild anti-Parkinsonian effect but it is often used to reduce levodopa-induced dyskinesia. This medication is used in early and advanced PD to help tremor or to reduce dyskinesis that occur with dopamine medication. Amantadine has many severe side effects and its anti-Parkinsonian effect are very mild. That is the reason why amantadine has been used mainly as a combination treatment for dyskinesia control. 
Anticholinergic medication. Trihexyphenidyl is an anticholinergic medication frequently used to treat Parkinson's disease tremors. This drug can also have some effect on stiffness and weak muscle control. The use of anticholinergic medication is limited by its side effects. Older patients may do not tolerate anticholinergic medications due to side effects such as memory impairment, confusion, and hallucinations. Despite these side effects, trihexyphenidyl can offer tremor relief in patients whose tremor is resistant to levodopa. It may have a levodopa sparing effect, reducing the need for higher doses of levodopa that are often required to treat refractory tremors. Now we're going to talk about the surgical treatment for PD. Surgical treatment is indicated for patients with advanced PD and can also be called interventional therapy. Duodopa therapy is a type of interventional therapy indicated for patients with advanced PD who present symptoms that cannot be managed by oral or transdermal medications. This treatment can also be called carbidopa slash levodopa enteral suspension. The duration of action of oral levodopa becomes shorter as Parkinson's disease progresses and this problem requires an alternative treatment. Duodopa therapy involves a surgically implanted jejunostomy connected to a pump that infuses medication directly into the proximal jejunum where levodopa absorption is maximal. Patients receive a morning bolus dose of medication followed by a continuous maintenance dose. During the day patients have the ability to self-administer extra doses to deal with off periods. The pump is disconnected at the end of the waking day. Studies have shown a reduction in daily off time by nearly two hours when duodopa is compared with standard levodopa oral formulation. A reduction in dyskinesia frequency can also be observed. Side effects of this medication include surgical and device complications such as abdominal pain, infection, tube occlusion and dislocation, buried bumper syndrome, bezoars, leakage, and polyneuropathy. A significant benefit can be achieved in some selected patients. Usually, those with a dedicated caregiver to assist with device maintenance and those who are reluctant to pursue or are poor candidates for deep brain stimulation can benefit from duodopa. We are going to explore a different type of surgical treatment now, called deep brain stimulation. Deep brain stimulation or DBS, was first approved in 1997 to treat PD tremors. Then, in 2002, DBS was approved for the treatment of advanced Parkinson's symptoms. More recently, in 2016, DBS surgery was approved for the earlier stages of PD. DBS is a type of neuromodulation and consists of the surgical implantation of electrodes used to directly stimulate specific regions of the brain. In DBS surgery, electrodes are inserted into a targeted area of the brain, with the help of magnetic resonance imaging and recordings of brain cell activity during the procedure. A second procedure is performed to implant an IPG, impulse generator battery, something like a pacemaker. The IPG is placed under the collarbone or into the abdomen and provides an electrical impulse to a part of the brain involved in motor function. Those who undergo DBS surgery are given a controller to turn the device on or off. DBS is more effective for people who experience disabling tremors, wearing off spells, and medication-induced dyskinesias. Deep brain stimulation is certainly the most important therapeutic advancement for PD since the development of levodopa. Now, for our last type of surgical treatment, we are going to talk about the apomorphine pump. Apomorphine is derived from morphine. This was the first dopamine agonist with powerful anti-Parkinsonian effects to be used in clinical practice. Apomorphine use predated levodopa by 10 years. The first trial started in 1950 and researchers observed improvements in rigidity and tremor in PD patients 10 minutes after subcutaneous administration of a small dose of apomorphine. Oral administration of apomorphine required large doses to achieve a desired clinical response, and an exacerbated peripheral response was therefore common. This could include nausea, vomiting, postural hypotension, and impaired kidney function. In 1988, a group developed a mechanism for continuous subcutaneous apomorphine infusion, which was later routinely recommended for patients with severe, refractory off periods. The use of apomorphine pump was approved only in 2004 in the USA. Apomorphine is indicated when pills or capsules no longer control Parkinson's symptoms. It can be used alone but is often prescribed with levodopa medication to increase response. I would like to remind you that we speak of the most cited medications in the literature, 
but not all are available for use in all countries. In summary, in this class, we discussed, the mainstay for Parkinson's disease treatment involves drugs that replace dopamine or simulate its effect on the dopamine receptors. Levodopa is the best drug for controlling the motor symptoms of PD, especially when combined with dopa decarboxylase inhibitor. Surgical treatment is usually indicated for patients with advanced PD. Surgical treatment can also be called interventional therapy. Deep brain stimulation, DBS, is certainly the most important therapeutic advancement since the development of levodopa. And carbidopa levodopa enteral suspension and apomorphine pump can also be indicated for patients with advanced PD who present symptoms that cannot be managed by oral or transdermal medications. Thank you for watching this class. Remember to answer the quiz, it will help you to memorize the lesson content. Enjoy the course.